Hello folks, welcome to Board Game Corner. I'm Mark. And I'm Randy. This week we're taking a look at Viceroy. We're using science and magic to gain points in building our giant pyramid. Viceroy is brought to you by Hobby World and Mayday Games. It plays one to four players, ages 13 and up, and it plays in about 45 to 60 minutes. Definitely. So let's go see how tall we can make that pyramid. Hundreds of years from now, when historians of lore will attempt to read and rewrite the chronicles of today's events, they will most likely not be able to figure out all the individual moves made as part of the great game. Only the actions of the kings will be faithfully preserved in time. All the labors of their subjects and subordinates, whose names have been lost in the fog of time, will be attributed to them. These will be our achievements and our names, Viceroy. Viceroy is a board game for one to four players aged 12 and up. As they struggle for control over the fantasy world of Lar, players recruit a variety of allies, from a wanderer to a prince, and enact various laws. As the game progresses, each player builds their own pyramid of power by developing their state's military and magical might, increasing their own authority, and gaining the precious gemstones they need to continue expanding their nation. The player who has the most power points at the end of the game becomes the ruler of all lar and the winner of the game. For this overview, we will be using a couple add-ons, the card sleeves, the play mats, which help organize the cards and has a round tracker, and finally the gems. None of these are part of the base game, but can be purchased separately from Mayday games. In the base game, there are cards that are used to divide up the playing field, and the gems are simple but effective tokens. Each player receives a screen or shield to help keep their gems hidden. Four character cards are dealt to each player, choosing one to play and add to the base or start of the pyramid. They immediately receive the base level reward once played. Then from the remaining three, keep one and discard the rest to the small deck. Each player also receives three law cards. Depending on the law card, its effect can be one shot, continuous, or triggered at the end of the game. Also law cards have no cost when played in your pyramid. Each player is given two of each color of gem, then randomly discards two back to the supply. All the gems are placed behind the player's screen and kept secret throughout the game. The game is divided up into 12 rounds. Each round starts with the bidding phase. During the phase, each player can bid on one character card using gems that correspond with the auction color. Okay, so here's how an auction works. The players secretly choose what color they are going to bid on, then place the corresponding gem in their hand. Each player holds their hand out and everyone reveals at the same time. If each player chose a different color gem, then they each receive the character card from that colored auction. Now, if multiple players chose the same color and there's not enough cards to go around, all players forfeit their gems back to the supply. If two players have bid on the same color and there are two cards in play, then they must negotiate who gets what. If they can't reach a decision, they forfeit their gems back to the supply. Also players can negotiate at any time and are encouraged to do so, even before any gems are revealed. Players can also choose to not bid anything. In this case, they would receive three gems from the supply. Once the bidding phase is over, the remaining cards are moved to the top of the auction. Any cards already in the second chance auction are moved to the discard pile. Next up, the building phase. Players can choose the cards they wish to build, as long as they have the means to pay for them. Each cost and reward is shown on the cards. The gym color is the cost, and each reward is different based on the level of the pyramid. The cost goes up for each level you place the character card on. You pay the level that you place the card into, as well as the levels below. However, you only receive the reward for the level you place the card into. So let's take a closer look at some of these character cards. The Mercenary, the Pixie, and the Scout. All of these character cards have amazing artwork, just fantastic. While building your pyramid, you will attempt to complete single colored circles, which will bring victory points at the end of the game. Also, when completing a colored circle, you will receive its corresponding colored gem. And at the end of the game, for any mismatched color circles, you can use gems from your supply to paint and complete the circles. So, costs and rewards. 
The cost and reward for mercenaries is as follows. So if you, if you build the mercenary in the bottom level of your pyramid, then you would activate this infinite gemstone, and you would pay a red gem in order to do that. The infinite gemstone is great because throughout the rest of the game, you can use it to pay for other character cards in your pyramid. Now, if you build in the second level, then you would have a scroll or magic token placed on your character card. This allows you points at the end of the game if you have bonuses for magic. Now, on the third level, you have a shield that would be placed on the card, and then you can choose any four stones, gems that you wish from the stash. And then lastly, you, on the fourth level, you would build two science tokens. Uh, again, remember that when you're building on different levels of the pyramid, that you only receive the reward for the level that you placed it in. But you still pay every cost along the way. Some of the other symbols you see, like over here on the pixie, is that she has the ability on different levels of the pyramid to draw cards from either the small character deck or the law deck. Character cards can also give you power tokens or victory points straight up onto the card, depending on the level of the a pyramid you build in again. You also can get different tokens that show bonuses for magic or completed circles or infinite gems. So why are you building this pyramid? Well, for victory points, of course. And there are lots of ways to score points in this game. For each single colored circle in your pyramid, you gain power or victory points equal to the level of the top card forming the circle. So a level two circle is worth two points, level three is worth three, and so on. And then there are extra points for bonus tokens of the same color. For each infinite gemstone in your pyramid, you gain power points equal to the level where the gemstone is located, plus extra points from bonus tokens of the same color. For law card, you gain power points according to the text of the law card in your pyramid. Every power point taken in your pyramid gives you points equal to its value. Every magic token in your pyramid gives you the number of points equal to the total bonus of all your bonus tokens for magic in your pyramid. Completed sets gain you 12 victory points per set. And finally, attack tokens. You lose four power points for each attack token your opponents have. Every defense token in your pyramid neutralizes one enemy attack token. All right, what do we think of this game? I suspect I'm going to like this game more than you. I suspect you will. <laughs> That's because it has so much theme, and you love theme, I right? know. That's the crazy thing about this game, is that there really is no theme. And it's sad, because you look at the characters yeah. and the cards, and they're so beautifully illustrated. You go, I want to know more about this exactly. world. Who are these guys? What do they do? Yeah. But you won't There's find out anything. There's just nothing there. It yeah. could be anything. They could have been spaceships, or it just wouldn't have mattered. Yeah. Um, so, which is what's really odd about that is that I do really like this game and it has zero theme and but it does have um, amazing graphics the the artwork is phenomenal I love the different cards and I also like the fact that every game I've played I've done completely different things scoring points with science or magic or using PowerPoints um, just going all kinds of directions and using the the in infinite stones. I want to say infinity stones. Uh, I say, no, say infinity gems. <laughs> infinity and we'll gems. Marvel Susan's for that. Yeah. But the <laughs> those infinite gems are amazing and very so useful throughout the game. And you know, we even had a little bit of rough time with the manual on this one, right? Uh, I'd say more than a little. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this, this game does not lend itself to being opened up and played immediately. Yeah. And we, we, the first time we played, we played it wrong, but we learned what we fixed, and we fixed that. Exactly. But then we still played it we wrong. We still played it wrong uh, again. And we know we're not the only ones. You're right. Uh, you know who you are out there. So. <laughs> so, yeah, the manual's a little rough to get through. You really should sit down and read it a couple times before you jump yeah. in. Yeah. I felt like you're jumping around uh, through the manual 
to get the the, the whole of the game. Well, the, right? the problem is oftentimes the manual is not just used for the initial read through. It right. also is a reference book that when you're playing the game, you say, "How does this work again?" You go back yeah. to the manual. Unfortunately, the manual has several por portions where it says, "See further," yeah. and you think that paragraph's all you need to read, but no. Two pages later, there's another key there's part. There's more. Yeah. Yep. I, it does though have a nice reference on the back about yeah. what the all the power oh, points or victory points. Yeah, scoring. It's easy. Scoring is easy. So that was never in question. Uh, and your your shields have that on the back. Well, they there's don't some, have the scoring. They, no, they, but they, they have, have the key, how the how the different uh, tokens are used. Yeah. So that's good. But so I wish really they'd helps. had the scoring on the back, on the back as well. well. Yeah, would have been, nice. been nice. You're yeah. right. Um, so anyway, there. There's some things I don't like, um, you know, with the manual and such. And again, I'm a huge theme guy. I would like to have some sort of cohesive theme throughout the game. But uh, I don't know. The mechanics work for me. I love building, and I think that's probably what it is. It's because I'm building this pyramid. or Basically, it's an engine that's producing me points. Well, it's not exactly you know? an engine in the sense that things happen every turn. Right. No, trigger. I mean, the, the, some do. So, the, the key things that are engine-like, if you will, yeah. is there are the infinity stones, which right. you can use to spend, the uh, science tokens, which are the gears, which right. uh, increase the number of gems you can take when you pass, mm -hmm. but otherwise, they're not really engine-y in the sense yeah. that nothing triggers It, it has that turn. sense, though, to it. I, there's a feel that's the same kind of thing. You're you're building something that's going to generate you points. Is really, oh, well, in that yeah, sense, yeah. In it's, that it's, sense. But that, it, it, so, it is a a point salad, if you haven't yeah. heard that term before, right. means there's a lot of different ways to get points, and yep. it's similar, and it's in, inevitably compared to Seven Wonders. Oh yeah, there's definitely a little fill. Yeah, you've got some which fill is also point salad to an extent, and people have compared it to um, to Splendor as oh, well. Yeah, now, right, yeah. Mark doesn't like Splendor as much as I do, so That's I was true. kind of surprised. <laughs> but th th to be honest, though, this game doesn't remind me as much of Splendor yeah. as in some ways it does. And you haven't heard me say this before. Uh -oh. Roll for the galaxy. Oh yeah, okay. Because yeah. there are elements of this. Uh, it, it's not as solitaire-ish as Roll for the Galaxy no, is, right. but there's still that element of you're building your own little kingdom, or yeah. in this case, pyramid here, yep. and you're doing all your stuff here. And your focus while you're playing the game is not the other players necessarily. Right. Now, Roll for the Galaxy only has the the common element when you're flipping over which phases you're activating mm -hmm. during a turn, whereas this uh, the bidding. And the the vying for gems. Oftentimes, when the gem pile gets down low, you really have to be cognizant of what other people are going to be taking yes. because you might really need yellow yeah. gems, and you know somebody else might take them all. So yeah, and it's easy to hoard gems, which I've found recently has been one of the things yeah. I like Order. to do. <laughs> So yeah, that's pretty fun. So you know, this game really fu really works for me. Um, I'm gonna give it a solid 3.0 out of four quarters. Oh okay, okay. Yeah, I yeah. thought for sure it's gonna be a little bit higher. Well, than that, the, it would have been higher if the theme, the theme, uh, the theme course. dragged it down. Yeah, okay, or lack yeah. thereof. Lack right, thereof. Right. Yeah. So now. now I've enjoyed playing it, and to be totally honest, I want to play it some more, in large part, so I can figure out if I can play it better. Right. Um, we played it uh, several. We played it a half dozen times yeah, or more. Yeah, more than that. More actually, than that. Yeah. Um, and uh, some of the, I agree with the good things that Mark said. Some of the issues I had though was that um, imagine that you tune into the ten o'clock news to see the weather, and what they have during that segment is not a big weather map with a with a weather girl here. <laughs> you see a close up of the weather girl, yeah. an itty bitty inset Same. of the weather map. But the weather girl's not even talking uh, about weather. She's talking about something else entirely. Right. And it's not that it's not interesting, but the fact is. The thing you really care about is fairly small in that picture, and that's the same problem with the cards. Is the the key elements right. of the cards are overshadowed by the great artwork, beautiful artwork, but they've compromised the yeah. visibility of the key things that you're bidding on. So it, it's very difficult to see across the table the key elements, not just on, not just on the bidding mat, but if I'm trying to figure out what Mark's going to go for, because yeah. I don't want to lose gems when I'm bidding, yeah. it makes it difficult. Makes it difficult. And it, I found too, right, that it, I wasn't really able to play more than a couple cards ahead. I I couldn't plan as far in ahead as I wanted to. Maybe I'm just not. Playing well, it, no, I mean, you weren't. I think that's why you played yeah. faster. And I, I would auger in. I'd have problems with analysis paralysis. I, I really wanted. Because he never usually has problems. I never that. have problems. With that. <laughs> this is a game I think that's going to be frustrating for people who are more strategic yeah, and uh, less tactical. I would like to have seen, and I even pulled this out. Ticket to Ride Asia has some cool. Uh, card holders, where mm, you could actually right. lay them out and say, okay, these are the levels. I want this one to be mm -hmm. my fourth level and this one to be my second level. So you could kind of you plan. plan it. Yeah. 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 Whereas just holding them in your hand, you can have four or more cards in your hand yeah. at any given time, and it's very difficult to keep them in order. Right. So it goes back to what you're saying. It's, yep. it's hard to plan ahead, and those yep. people who are 
wanting to plan three or four moves ahead um, can can be very yeah. frustrated by that. Yeah, but I, on the flip side of that, though, I kind of like the fact that I feel like I'm winging it every time. <laughs> you know, you well, know, I actually feel like, wow, what can I do different this game? And uh, that, I don't know, that's been but, really but fun. you like that. I and do. Me, I really like, like I'm that. winging it. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and I've tried numerous strategies, and they've all worked pretty yeah, well you've done in quite general. Well. Yeah. yeah, and and I think that's why you enjoy it like more. from the hip playing almost. You it, know? it is, and so I think that's a key thing for people to understand is there is a, an element of that saying, well, uh, I can't think too far ahead. I'll just grab the best thing I can from the current yeah. the current play field. Um, Mark mentioned that we are using some advanced components here. The gems mm -hmm. are, are great gems for that. I really like the play mat, and that's oh, going to cost yeah. you a little bit extra, but if you like this game, you really I highly recommend yep. that you get it because it's easy to slide cards right. up to the to the uh, higher spot instead of picking them up and moving them over the, the cards you get in the base yep. game. Um, the auction part can be kind of frustrating, and I think there's an element there that some people may love, but I'm not one of those in the sense that if you're going to avoid losing gems, you're going to want to do some negotiation there. You're going to want to say, hey, you know, I want to do this one. And, and <laughs> like, if you speak up too soon, somebody else yeah. might say, well, you looks, like, looks like you're ahead, so I'm going to intentionally block you. I'm yep. going to be the same color you will. Yep. So I Actually, think, that, that negotiation stuff is really fun. Well, I, I, yeah, yeah, and I think some people will really like it. Yeah. Other people will find the bidding just kind of an obstacle yeah, to, maybe to, so. to what they really want to do, which is build their pyramid. Right. Um, the other thing I, I kind of had an issue with is we, like I said, this game is compared to Seven Wonders often. Seven Wonders kind of flows. Everybody's taking their turn at the same time, and that's great. This has a sequencing mechanism. Now, because there are up to three auction phases, mm -hmm. and there's up to three development phases per turn, uh, it's by they, they implement the sequencing by a little number down the lower left-hand yep. corner. It's an itty-bitty tiny number. <laughs> and it can get awkward because yeah, it's not always, to... find the person with the lowest number and then just go around the table. Right, it's, no. well, lowest, next lowest, lowest next yeah, lowest. So and so people can get confused when it's their turn. And that can happen up to, if you, you bid, or if you build three times in turn with a four-player game, you can be doing that 12 times in yeah. one turn. So it doesn't flow, in my opinion, it doesn't flow as well I was as some less, other games. I was less confused. Yeah, she was less confused. <laughs> but I had several people, and when we were playing yeah. with other people, they'd speak up and say, oh, is it my turn? What? Right. What? There, were a lot, yeah. there was a lot of that. So, yeah. so this is not saying that's a terrible obstacle, but no. it's a, just be aware that I don't, uh, I don't think it flows as well as some other games. Um, and if you have someone who's a caller, kind of like a, what, a square dance caller, if you will, <laughs> and keeps everybody on task, that will help quite a bit. Yeah. Be aware of that beforehand and if you get somebody in that role that'll probably help you out all right so where are you gonna rate it where am i gonna oh i have to rate it now you tell yes. me yes <laughs> i rate it 2.5 out of four corners okay so, so i knew i was gonna like it more yeah than i knew you were gonna like it too uh, boy it's gonna be weird if i'd rate it at 3.5 uh, you would have been stunned i would have been stunned but i still would have and, and so again if for those of you not familiar with the rating system that's 2.5 out of four i still think this is a better than average game yeah i think uh those people who like uh, Seven Wonders and have played the daylights out of it and all of this expansion might find this yeah. a uh, a um, what did it say that, like a next step and in several ways it's like Seven Wonders because it's like saying any card can have a variety of effects depending upon what level you play it on so it can be a, a military card at the first level or it could be a science card at the second level or yeah. it can be a gold commerce card at the third level so it does have that extra dimension and uh, people who want that extra dimension might find this very attractive yeah great all right folks that's our review this week hope you enjoyed it and until next time we'll, we'll see you at the table, table.